two boxes connected by a light rope. Boxes A and B are connected to each end of a light vertical rope, as you can see in the figure. A constant upward force of 80 newtons is applied to box A. Here, it's applied to box A. Starting from rest, box B descends 12 meters in 4 seconds. The tension in the rope connecting the two boxes is 36 newtons. What are the masses of part A box B and part B box A? Okay, we can start in part A with the free body diagram for box B. Box B, modeled as a particle here, uh, feels its weight, the gravitational force due to Earth, mass of the box B times G, and then it feels the tension in the rope, tension T. And this is the y-axis. So the net force on the y-axis must be equal to uh, tension minus the weight of box B and BG. This must be equal to mass of box B times acceleration A. The force that we're applying is constant, so we go we're going to have constant acceleration motion. Now, <clears throat> the distance uh, that we travel on the y-axis, delta y, is minus 12 because uh, it's descending. This must be equal to 1 over 2 at square in constant acceleration motion. And this, it descends in 4 seconds, so it's going to be 1 over 2 a times 4 square. And that gives us, for the acceleration, minus 24 divided by 16, which is equal to minus 1.5 meters per second square. The tension is, uh, according to the free body diagram of box B, mass of B times G plus A, so mass of block B must be equal to the tension T divided by acceleration A plus gravitational acceleration G. And the tension in the uh, rope was 36 newtons, as you can see here, the tension in the rope. So we're going to have 36 divided by A plus G, which is uh, 9.8 minus 1.5 meters per second square and that gives us uh, you can see we have three significant figures in all the numbers so it's 4.34 kilograms okay now we can move on to part b uh, determine the mass of box A. Again, we're going to draw a free body diagram for uh, box A. Box A, modeled as a particle, feels the weight mass of block A times G, it feels the tension T as well, and then there's the external force that we apply, that is F. And once again, this is the y-axis, the vertical axis. And the net force on the y-axis is now equal to the external force F minus the weight of box A minus the tension 
this is equal to mass of box A times the common acceleration A. So you can see that mass of box A um, multiplied by G plus A, if I take uh, this term to the right hand side, must be equal to F minus the tension. Therefore, the mass of box A is equal to F minus T divided by G plus A. And F was 80 newtons, that's the force applied to box A. So this is 80 newtons minus 36 newtons, the tension in the rope, divided by 9.8 minus 1.5, and that gives us 5.30 kilograms for the mass of box A. Okay, so to summarize, in the previous problem we had a heavy rope, now we have a light rope. And we're applying an external force, an external force on box A that's trying to pull it up, but the system actually descends. Box B descends 12 meters in 4 seconds. And uh, from this information, basically, I gather that it should be a constant acceleration motion because all forces are constant here. And when I draw the free body diagram of box B, I have to include uh, the tension in the cord that is trying to pull it up on box B and trying to pull it down on box A. And um, the net force in the y-axis is tension minus the weight of box B, which is the gravitational force applied by the Earth on box B. This is equal to mass of box B times A. Uh, the net force is equal to ma, Newton's second law. and uh, since I have constant acceleration motion, the change in uh, the uh, position on the y-axis, that's the displacement, delta y is minus 12, because it's descending, it's 1 half at square, I find that acceleration is minus 1.5 meters per second square. So minus indicates that it's in the minus j hat direction. And the tension is therefore equal to mass of box B times G plus A. So tension divided by A plus G gives me uh, the mass of box B. And for box A, I have the external force F, the weight and the tension trying to pull it down. So writing the net force on the y-axis, F minus MAG minus T, this must be equal to mass of box A times the common acceleration A. And from this equation, I can get a mass of box A to be 5.30 kilograms.